The end of The Mandalorian Chapter 12 revealed Moff Gideon with a large collection of what appear to be big, black-armored Imperial battle droids. Right off the bat in my review, I said they were giving me Dark Trooper vibes from Star Wars Legends. Eckhart Slatter suggested I watch the scene again with descriptive audio on, and sure enough, those droids are called Dark Troopers by name. Yet again, we're seeing something I never, ever imagined would appear in a live-action Star Wars story. So today, let's talk about what the Dark Troopers are, their origins and legends, and how they could play into the rest of The Mandalorian. The Dark Troopers first appeared way back in 1995 in the game Dark Forces. 25 years ago, oh my god, I'm old. I played that game back in second grade, I think it was, and I've done a full series of videos on it here on the channel as well. It's got a very special place in my heart. But they're basically Imperial battle droids that came in three phases. The first was very simple, basically a skeletal frame with a vibro sword and a shield. The second phase more closely resembled a beefed up stormtrooper armed with assault cannons, jump packs, and more. The third phase was actually an exoskeleton that could be worn by soldiers like like Iron Man armor. All of them were made out of a lightsaber resistance metal called Frick. They were created shortly after the Battle of Yavin in the Legends timeline, and most of them were destroyed by Kyle Katarn around that same time before they could enter widespread production. So that's their basic Legends history, but there actually is a little bit to say about them in canon as well. A version of the Phase 2 armor was included in the mobile game Star Wars Commander. I have a feeling the Mandalorian will ignore that appearance and just do its own thing, but I could always be wrong. The arm joint seen in the show actually does look kind of similar. Star Wars Rebels Season 3 also introduced a sentry droid called the DT Series Sentry Droid. Their design was confirmed to be inspired by the Dark Troopers from Star Wars Legends. It's possible the Dark Troopers of the Mandalorian could simply be variants of this droid model, but from what little we've seen of them, I think we're about to get something different. I'm completely guessing at this point as to what we might see in the future of the series, but I doubt we're going to see the full-on Star Wars Legends version of the Dark Trooper. I don't think we'll see three separate phases, they'll probably just be simplified down to the Phase 2 design, like a big, monstrous Stormtrooper looking droid made of metal. And speaking of metal, what I think would be really interesting is if they simplified that as well. Why use Frick when we've already got Beskar sitting right there, ready to be used? It's still a highly durable and blaster-resistant metal, not only would it make them very difficult to take down, but it's like a slap in the face for Gideon to use the Mandalorian people's sacred metal in this way. On a more personal note, this could stir up a lot of Din's past feelings towards droids. IG-11 seems to have moved him beyond his pure hatred of all droid kind, but being attacked by an army of Imperial battle droids surely wouldn't be good for his mental state, especially if they're made out of Beskar. I imagine Gideon is creating battle droids because the Empire is in an extremely weakened state at this point in time. He's a threat to be sure, but there are plenty of clues that his Imperial Remnant isn't what it once was. Most prominently, we see that his command ship is an Arquedon's class light cruiser instead of something like a Star Destroyer. A formidable ship, but a fifth the size of the usual Imperial capital ship of choice. He probably doesn't have that many troopers to carry out his wishes, but if he happened to have access to Beskar, he could make a decent-sized, dangerous army. Where might he get the Beskar, though? I have a theory that Gideon is currently occupying Mandalorian space. Werner Herzog's character from the first season, the client, paid Din and Beskar in Chapter 3, and that had to come from somewhere. Gideon may have set up shop on Mandalore, a planet that was never part of the Republic, so the New Republic might not be all that concerned with what's going on there while they're still establishing themselves. We've already seen that they can't really keep the peace in the Outer Rim alone, so taking on an Imperial Warlord on a system that they have no claim to anyway probably isn't high up on their list of priorities. That means it would fall to characters like Din or Bo-Katan to maybe rally their people to take on Gideon and his Dark Troopers, reclaiming their homeworld once once again. But that's probably a ways off. For now, I'm just psyched to see yet another piece of my childhood making its way into live-action storytelling. We're still in very early days, so all of my speculation is probably way off. Hopefully we find out more soon and actually see them in action, but I am loving these connections. Hopefully this video helped anyone who didn't know what Dark Troopers were and why people are so excited to see them. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with our Mandalorian coverage every week, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.